What is up, guys? I am here with the co-founder and CEO of Terra Virtua, Gary Bracey. How's it going, Gary? Great, Steve. Great. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm excited to kind of dig a little bit in to Terra Virtua, and I've been obsessed with the website. It's super slick and easy to use and Thank fun you. to look at, above all, uh, just with all the designs of all these big names. But before we get into the nitty-gritty of Terra Virtua, let's hear a little bit about yourself. Let's hear, you know, what's your background and what led you to start Terra Virtua? Sure. Um, well, first of all, thanks for asking me along, Steve. Um, yeah, I, it goes back, my, my career goes back uh, to the mid 80s. I've been involved with video games pretty much from the early days of video games, the very, very early days. Um, when it, they weren't video games, they were computer games. Um, and I worked with a company called Ocean Software. I was one of the early people heading up development and, and game design, etc. And we were the first company really to license movies um, for to make games from. And that, I like to think, helped propel computer games into the mainstream, because at one time they were just considered a little bit geeky, a little bit nerdy and, and niche. And what happened was when we started um, licensing big brand movies like Robocop and Untouchables and, and uh, Top Gun and ultimately Jurassic Park, then that sort of helped shift that into the mainstream and the only reason i'm mentioning that is because there is some relevance to what we're doing now um with nfts um and and so uh i i've been in video games pretty much all my working career it was great fun um I enjoyed it I, I, and i've been involved in every aspect of that we were we started off as a developer publisher and i started up heading up the development department and built the first real major in-house studio this was even before the days of ea um and then uh as i say I, i've been involved in video games watched all the transitions from from computer to console to handheld to mobile and i've been involved in, in games in, in all of those different transitions and in different ways going from development to publishing to marketing to licensing um so quite a, a varied amount of experience in a, in a very unvaried uh, sector um, and, and that's what brought me uh, indirectly to uh, to Terra Virtua. Nice, nice. So you've watched literally from the from day zero when it was considered computer games, you know, you had Atari and things like that, all the way to where it is now where, you know, even on just your cell phone, you have these things that are light years faster than what it was originally. <laughs> Yeah. That must be super surreal to watch it, it, that. It, it is. I mean, you look back and you think, um, what I, I often like to say is that the, the first computers that I was working with were things like the VIC-20 and the Sinclair Spectrum, which had memory of 16K. You had to write a game <laughs> in 16K, which these days would just be a little bit of text in a, in a video <laughs> game. Uh, it, it, it's just mind-blowing and baffling uh, how we were able to get things actually interactive and fun in such a small space, but such is progress. Yeah, definitely. And so fast too, like yeah. extremely yeah. quick, extremely yes. quick. So that's a good transition into Terra Virtua. So you have this extensive experience with building these different types of video games in all different aspects, all these different departments over the years, and you have all this experience across the board. So what is Terra Virtua and how are you guys using NFTs? Sure. Um, well, it's all, it's all part and parcel of one story, I guess. Um, I had a meeting set up with some guy called, whose name was Jawad Ashraf, who I never knew. Um, and a meeting set up by a mutual friend. He was uh, looking to develop a VR games publishing company. Um, well, he had a VR games publishing company and he was looking for a way of publishing, bringing his product to Europe and looking for help with publishing. And a mutual friend suggested I could help. I was doing a little bit of consultancy at the time. We met up in a coffee shop in, um, in an area of the UK called Staines and we instantly hit it off and we started brainstorming and very soon the original proposal 
of what, why he came to meet me was forgotten about. And we started thinking about the blockchain and how we can actually gamify it in a way. Um, and NFTs gradually came into the mix. And um, we parted having agreed that we would start a new venture together, um, which uh, became Terra Virtua. And, and the idea was um, NFTs, the NFT platforms are quite complicated to get to grips with. What we wanted to do was bring NFTs to the mainstream. I mean, this is this was our fundamental uh, goal and ambition because it's not a small ambition to take what is essentially a small nascent sector at the moment to the mass market on a global scale. Um, and so the challenges arose quite quickly. The first one was onboarding people. We realized that we had to get something that was as simple and as friendly as Amazon, for instance, when you register. So you come onto Terra Virtua, you sign in. Um, if you're a crypto person and you, you have a wallet and everything else, that's fine, we accept all that. But for someone who doesn't, that's quite a lengthy and complicated process. And every complicated process, as we've discovered with video games, represents a hurdle and you lose people every single hurdle along the way. So we had to make it as a smooth a transition as possible. So we made this interface that onboards you as simply as Amazon, you register with your email address, credit card, and bang, you're in, and you can go and buy stuff straight away. So the whole website and, and process is designed to be friendly and intuitive. Um, the next challenge we had was um, creating products that people would essentially trust or at least find familiar. Mm. So this is where I go back to what I was originally talking about with video games and licensing movies, making something that's familiar. And so we approached um, a number of movie studios. We were fortunate enough. In the meantime, what we'd done is we'd assembled this amazing team of people. So it grew from just Jawad and myself, and we brought on some, some great people, mostly from the video games sector. Um, and, and they sort of bolstered everything that we were doing. Jawad had a development team uh, at his disposal, essentially, and which is, they were the guys who were originally developing the VR stuff. And they obviously pivoted to create and help us uh, develop um, Terra Virtua. So um, what we had by virtue of our previous careers were contacts in the movie space and, and in licensing generally. So we approached uh, some large studios. They didn't know what the hell we were talking about, <laughs> talking about NFTs and, and, and collectibles. Um, but there was trust there. We, 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 we built up trust over the years. We dealt with them before. We would made them a lot of money via video games. So there was a leap of faith. And um, we managed to tie down some, some pretty big uh, licenses. And we got to creating and designing um, NFTs based on these licenses. And that was the next stage in order to to attract the mainstream and that is create things that are really really high fidelity and quality because if you're asking someone to pay tens of dollars hundreds of dollars and in some cases thousands of dollars um for an for a virtual item then it really needs to have be of the highest quality so that that was a challenge we set ourselves and i think we're we're pretty much achieving that we do 3d very very high fidelity high resolution animated items so um one one recent acquisition we made was the is the godzilla v kong movie um which which is great for obviously creating action figures and animating them and the guys are having great fun doing that except for the fur on kong which is a bit of a challenge but we'll get there. um um and and so we're, we're making these rich uh inter sort of semi-interactive uh action figures which people seem to be very very uh receptive to and they seem to be going very very well we've done specific rim we've done lost in space um we've done top gun godfather things like that and that there are quite a few others on the way so um what we're building up this whole thing the next challenge was okay we're giving people the opportunity to purchase these these 
items, these assets, but what can they do with them? Do they just sit there invisible on the computer screen? What we do know is that when people are collectors and when they acquire things, they like to show them off. They like to exhibit them. They like to their friends to see them and hopefully envy what they have. So we decided to build environments in which people could bring their NFTs and store them. And, and this is what I have behind me as my background. This is our fan cave. Um, and, and you can store your, your, your NFTs that you, you've purchased and you can then bring your friends in to these, these uh, environments and you can show them off and, and they can interact with them. I'm sorry, my, uh, my light seems to have gone a bit dark. Um, That's all right. Um, <laughs> so so what we've created is a fan cave which is the thing you can see behind me i know this is just a still shot but everything's animating uh, normally and, and moving as it should do we also have a terra dome which is where you can store your large items like vehicles like spaceships like godzilla and kong um and the pacific rim jaegers that type of thing huge areas we also have a 3d gallery so uh, soon you'll have the opportunity to create your own private 3D gallery and put your, your acquired art NFTs into it. And again, bring your friends in, show them around and show off your, uh, your gallery. Or if not, you can actually put them on the wall. Sorry, it's mirrored. Uh, on the wall behind you, you can see there's frames and you can put your art on, in your fan cave if you wish. So this is an all-encompassing platform which which i don't believe people have have focused on so much so you have your marketplace in which you can buy auction trade you have your environments in which you can bring your items in we want to make it a very social experience so you'll be able to bring your friends into your fan cave there'll be voice over ip you can talk to them about it and what you can't see in this photo is um, there's a screen there as well, which shows video. And at the moment, we're just running trailers of the movies that we're supporting. But in time, we'll be able to stream stuff um, more specific to what your interests are and maybe interviews like this. And, and you'll be able to customize what is showing on your screen. So we want to make it a very, very social uh, area. And, and that's it. So the, the final challenge of all these, getting this whole NFT into mainstream thing, is people and, and marketing. And marketing is normally create the creation of awareness, making people aware that such a thing called Terra Virtua exists and you can get Godzilla v Kong uh, digital action figures. That's normal marketing. But we have an additional challenge, and that is people don't know what NFTs are. They don't know what digital collectibles are. So marketing also for us encompasses education. We have to go out there with a message and very, very simply explain what we're doing, what NFTs are all about. This is a whole new sector and it's an incredibly exciting sector. Um, but uh, as we discussed before, 99% of people just don't know that it exists mm -hmm. and we have that that issue as well that blockchain is generally viewed by the outside world uh, with more than a hint of suspicion um it, you know it has some negative connotations because of what's gone before and um and we have to restore that trust um from the public and say look this is a safe place this is great fun this is a whole new concept. Come in and try it and experience it. And it is all about experience. So um, it's a question of ourselves and, and many other companies in the NFT space having to bring people in and give them as best an experience as they can um, so that they will come tell their friends and the, the whole sector will grow. And, and I passionately believe that is what's going to happen. And I also believe it's going to happen very very soon and very very quickly because mm -hmm. now we're seeing um the mark cubans of this world and and these these big influencers are actually talking about nfts so it's already getting noticed and what we need is something that's going to propel um this this sector into the mainstream and uh, and we're hoping hoping that we'll be a significant part of that yeah i love the 
the licensing route and it's very much woven in with your background and your experience and how adoption of video games really happened was with these big blockbuster, you know, licenses right up in front to, to help people adopt the, the technology. And I think it's a beautiful way of doing it to get it in the hands of people that are all these kind of fan bases all across the, the internet, right. which is a great way of, of, of doing it. And that's kind of built in marketing in a way. So let's say, you know, I have my my room behind me. You have your room behind you. I love that, that it's like a little virtual world. I can showcase it, get people to come into the environment. What about trading? Are, are you going to be able to swap? And also, how does the ownership work? Because I know that a lot of people talk about NFTs being, you know, a big part of it being the intent of the owner to own it and to transfer that ownership. So how does that work with you guys? Well, um, obviously, that, that, that that's... That's the big deal. And this is one of the, it, it, it's good that you've mentioned that because this is one of the main motivators that, that, that made us want to do this. Um, we sort of looked at the world of skins in games. Yeah, mm. We saw that Fortnite was generating billions of dollars from people just wanting to purchase digital apparel in uh, in the game and be different and have something to reflect their personality. And, and that was wonderful, but in 10 years time or whenever, when Fortnite eventually gets taken offline, all of those digital items that have been purchased disappear. Once the game is gone, that's the supporting thing that, that allows the, the items that have been bought to, 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 to be there. Mm -hmm. um, once the game's gone, all of those items go as well. And what we, my introduction to NFTs was that NFTs aren't like that. They're immutable, they're permanent. And once you've bought something, it's there forever. And unless you sell it, it's yours forever. It's there on the blockchain. The transaction is recorded on the blockchain and, um, and, and you have proof of ownership. And not just that, and this was where the real beauty came in. If you mint five of this item, uh, this, this whatever this item is, and I mint five of them, if you're interested in buying it, you can actually go online and check that there are only ever five of these items, which you can't do in real life. If an artist creates um, a print of a, of a piece of their work and they say, this is one of a hundred, we've only made printed a hundred of these. There's no real way to authenticate that. They could have made a thousand of them but they're telling everyone there's just a hundred. The rarity is governs the price. Mm -hmm. And in that situation, the rarity is based on trust. Whereas with the blockchain, as we know, it's trustless. You can actually verify that there were only 10 of this item ever made. So we love this whole concept. Um, so obviously in our, in our marketplace, you buy something, it's recorded on the blockchain, you can see the provenance, you can see the history uh, of the item you've bought, if you're not the first purchaser, um, and, and so on and so forth. You can then trade it, people can see on our marketplace that there is this item, this thing behind me, which you can see that side, um, that I've, I bought for $500, they can see that, and they can make a bid for it. Uh, whether I want to sell it or not, people can make a bid for it. And if, if I'm willing to accept their bid, that transaction will take place on the blockchain. And obviously the transfer of ownership will go with the transfer of funds and uh, the transaction's complete. It's, it's a really elegant way of doing things. And obviously uh, it's not just NFTs. This is what I believe is going to transform um, commerce generally in the future mm -hmm. I, I was talking to a fintech company earlier and i don't think they really appreciated the magnitude of what the blockchain is going to bring once all of this suspicion and you know lawlessness it, it, it's the wild west at the moment it still is it's not as much wild west as it was two years ago but it's the wild west and once all of that settled down and there's some sort of sensible roadmap for blockchain to be adopted in the real world um it's going to change everything and mm -hmm. i remember listening to people saying that 
two or three years ago when I got into blockchain and think feeling very very cynical and skeptical about it but now I'm I'm, I'm a convert you know it is the future and it's a wonderful thing um but we've got to get rid of all of those suspicions and perceptions yeah agreed agreed so one of the my favorite things I, I majored in economics so I'm always interested in like the the, these little economies that people can create now on chain and you guys have a token and you also have staking. So if I scoop up all the <laughs> top gun helmets, you know, I can get staking rewards. Right. So could you talk a little bit about that and how that, how that works? Yeah. I, I mean, we're, we're offering a uh, staking by Bitmax at the moment. I, I, I can't go. We've got a genius guy uh, with us, his name's David Atkinson, who's designed our entire tokenomics. Um, and he's incorporated some very, very interesting DeFi elements. Um, one of which is um, um, the Prestige Club. Um, and understand, I'm not gonna, there's no big revelations here because we are about to announce shortly exactly what this is going to entail. I can give you broad brushstrokes, um, but I can't give any detail. Um, uh, but it's very, very close. And I got the final white paper yesterday and it, it's wonderful. This guy's very, very clever. So um, um, what we're doing is we've got a prestige club, which will be, I always describe it like an airline loyalty club. You've got bronze, silver, gold, platinum, uh, and, and, and depending on how many TBK or token you hold, you will get that tier of privilege and those privileges will vary enormously from you know getting previews of, of, of new forthcoming nfts to maybe even some sort of personal engagement or interaction with a celebrity who's associated with those nfts but there is a lot of financial incentive and and, and staking rewards um that are going to come out i don't want to ruin anyone's uh <laughs> revelation so i can't go into detail but um um th th there is there is one fundamental thing that that i really enjoy about about tbk and that is we're not using it as a currency people say oh so i've got to buy your token in order to purchase an NF one of your nfts no you can purchase an NFT with Ethereum, you can purchase with a credit card. That's not the point of our token. Um, the point of our token is to hold it and use it in a way that gets you privileges and, and interesting stuff which you other, otherwise wouldn't be able to acquire without. And, um, and it's a lovely way of doing it. It, it. It's a loyalty thing. And then hopefully if you, if you do that, you get the token, you stake it, you use it to leverage all of these benefits, then in a certain time, six or 12 months later, when you may be bored or you may just need to transfer it into money, hopefully those tokens will be worth a little bit more than when you originally paid for them. So it's a good investment anyway. There's no guarantee of that, but but that's the way this whole thing works. And it's it just changes everything. And that's what I find so exciting about this whole sector. I mean, we're not in it for, for the short term. This is a lot, we've got a big roadmap and there are major plans in expanding the whole system. Um, our original vision in that, in three years ago in that coffee shop was to actually create Ready Player One. I mean, you know, a world where you are served all of your digital entertainment uh, and real entertainment in one place, which at the time we believed was going to be VR, which may or may not be the case. Um, but but that's the ultimate goal. And, and so we've got a really serious roadmap. And in order to build that and, and carve it out, um, you, you can't be in this for the short term. You know, this is a multi-year plan. Um, and what's interesting is when we first launched and announced Terra Virtua three years ago, or whatever it was, um, we actually rented BAFTA, the BAFTA headquarters, the film headquarters, where we screened the movie Ready Player One, which hadn't been released. This was two weeks before the formal right. release. <laughs> and we screened the, the movie to the press 
and we introduced it as the trailer for Terra Virtua. This is a two-hour Terra Virtua trailer. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Um, and, and that's always been the vision, but of course it's baby steps and, and there's so much more to do uh, along the way, but it, it, it's a hell of a journey we've got planned. Yeah. Yeah. And I've had the, the pleasure of meeting Russ um, before the call here. And I'd love to learn a little bit about the team. Are you guys, how big are you guys? Um, are you guys distributed across, you know, the US, the UK? And, and, and what's the team like? We couldn't do this without the team. I, I, I mean, um, you know, quite often I'm, I'm the front man on, on some of these things, but I, I always have to acknowledge that, you know, I'm just one cog. In, in a great machine and very, very proud to be part of that machine. Um, we got Russ, we got, uh, actually, I don't want to mention names because you miss one out and you feel dreadful afterwards. <laughs> but um, um, the, the, the team, uh, everyone's been handpicked and everyone bleeds Terra Virtua. You've met Russ, you know what he's like. Mm. He's got the passion. He, everyone on, the team has the same attitude and that's what's great and and i would also say i mean i pop in and out of our telegram community and we've got an amazing uh, emotionally invested community there um where they are they're, they're passionate about what we're doing and, and that's a, a culture we've been very very lucky to instill and um uh, we we have a team of developers out in Asia as well. We've got a team of about 60 to 80 developers, depending on what day you ask me. Um, and, and they are all working like mad solely on Terra Virtua. It's not just the stuff you can see behind me and the fan cave and the, the infrastructure, but also the marketplace and the assets themselves they're creating. I mean, we've got a big team of developers. And again, the passion and commitment is there. Everyone's in this for the long haul. No one sees this as, as a, you know, a job that's going to take a year and then move on to somewhere else. This is, this is a way of life um, that everyone seems to have brought into. And the team we've got, very talented. We've got we got strategy people, we got development people, we got marketing people, we got licensing people, we've got community people. Um, and and no one is forced into doing what they want. The guys who are running the communities really believe in what they're doing and they really care about the communities that they're running. And 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 this is one of them, you've seen it. Um we can't do this. This is not a one-man show. This isn't a two-man show. This is genuinely a collective team. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're very, very lucky that we've got the team we have. Fantastic. Fantastic. So we've covered a ton, covered you know the experience of the marketplace. We've covered uh, just the licensing, your background, the fan cave kind of element where people can go in and experience it. Where can people go and learn more about Terra Virtua? W, well, we've got a load of Medium articles. Um, we've got www.terravirtua.io is our, is our website, and that takes you straight in. We have some great videos, instructional videos, showing the user journey, um, showing uh, what you can do, what's available. Um, we're doing quite a lot on the art side as well, and we're trying to innovate and, and bring new experiences to the platform as well. So there's always something new happening uh, every every week or two. Um, we're gonna be making some, some big announcements over the coming weeks about what's coming next. Um, so you can simply search, um, I, I mean, hopefully to the uninitiated who, who don't know of our existence at all. Hopefully this is useful in, in learning about what the platform is, but there's plenty of material out there and uh, all of it is pretty much accessed via the website and uh, yeah please check it out and of course what we do is when you come on board you are given we have our own uh, little invention this guy little guy here closest to me behind me is what we're calling a v-flex which is a little robot um but they're created by us and de designed by us and we do different variants of them that's them on on the wall uh, there's a whole load of them on the wall uh, mm -hmm. and there's, there's sporting type ones and there's action type ones and santa claus ones and wizard ones or every different genre and they all animate differently and they all um and what, what happens is when you sign in when you register with terra virtua you're given a free v-flex right 
and you also get free the fan cave behind and um, and you can play around and see get a taste of what the possibilities are and one of the elements i didn't describe is we do um a phone ar uh, app that we have so you can interact with your nft in your home so it'll video you interacting with your animating nft and then you can video it and obviously send it out on uh, social media so your friends can can envy you with your robot from lost in space or the jaeger from pacific rim or or even the reflect uh, that you're interacting with so we're trying to make it a fun experience and at the end of the day you've got your nft which is yours until you sell it and you may hopefully sell it at a profit but in the meantime you can have some fun with it beautiful Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, describing all of the history and what's coming with Terra Virtua today, Gary. Thanks so much, Steve. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me on.